We are back. We are back. For one other episode coming from Las Vegas. This episode is episode number four. Fourth episode behind the scenes with Laura and Michael. We should really say behind the scenes financial talk. Financial right? behind the scenes, yeah. You're financial right. talk behind much. the scenes with Laura and Michael. I like that. Coming to you from the studios here in Las Vegas. Beautiful Wynn Hotel. Wynn Hotel. A Blue Wire Studios. We were here for a conference, a financial conference, and we hung we back to do this because we were so inspired. Here's a cool thing. They have all these kind of celebrities that come to the studio. It's I called know. Blue Wire Studios. Yeah, Look them up. Really awesome cool. place at the win. And there's all these celebrities, mostly Amazing. sports celebrities coming to do podcasts from here. We're like, oh, we got to use this studio. Yeah, so great. So we are back to talk today. This is, um, yeah. we're going to talk about something that, you know what, is so important. So important. It's yeah. Financial financial literacy, and I think we have to first explain what that means. Sure. Because some people it might be new, others may not. And then I wanted to talk about like what what it was like when you and I were growing up, and what's going yeah. on now. So, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about what you feel what the definition of financial? Well, I literacy feel the definition is? of financial literacy is is what you had said in a previous episode, which is knowledge is power, right? True. Yeah. Financial. Look, there are subjects and topics that. There's going to be experts out there. There's yeah. no doubt about it. But that doesn't mean you can't learn things, right? So financial literacy is understanding your money, understanding the options you have with your money, and understanding what not to do with your money too, right? Yeah, I think so. So don't always take, you see someone, you know, like, uh, it, it's education on finance so That's that you can... Prepare for your future. I think, yeah. And what's so interesting is when you and I were growing up back in the yeah, 70s yeah. and 80s, uh, I did not have a class on this. No, I mean, I think you only not. had a class like if you chose it, but it was, certainly wasn't like part of the core. You know, you had to take like home ec and wood shop and things, but no one ever took, like I never took how to balance my checkbook. Nope. I didn't even know didn't anything know. about that. Um, I didn't know budgeting, like what was it to budget. I knew nothing about taxes. Like, taxes? Right. What? I didn't even know what that was. I knew about the tea party and, like, the tea party, the tea being spilled in. <laughs> the <laughs> but, like, tea being it spilled in, in Boston exactly, tea party. Exactly, but, like, I didn't know, like, what that meant. In fact, I, I, I don't want to, you know, well, I want to even say, I was going to say my daughter just finished her first year of employment after college graduation, and she's getting it to her tax return, and she cannot yeah, yeah. get it. She's so excited. She thinks the government is paying her. Yeah, she was getting it. She's getting a <laughs> refund. Right. And she's all excited to get a refund. Right. And I'm like, this is financial literacy. See? There you go. Yeah. So I was like, Zoe, okay, <laughs> our youngest daughter's name is Zoe. Yes. I said, Zoe, if you're getting a refund, that means you paid the government too much money. They took out too much money out of your paycheck. Right. And they're returning your money to you. They're not paying you. They're not Zoe. paying you. How many people get refunds? Go, oh, can't wait for my refund. Yeah, and it's a great feeling. Don't get me wrong. It's so, but but the government is actually using your money. That's right. Not paying you for it. No, that's right. right. Because you're putting more money. They're taking more out for taxes. And like, oops, we took too much out. Let me return some money to you. All right. So the bottom line is, even recently, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know how much financial literacy is being taught in schools. Right. right? Yeah. Uh, for me, my grandmother is the one who taught me how to balance my checkbook. Okay. I just want to throw that out there and give right. my grandmother a shout out. She's, your she's, grandmother was a tough cookie. She was a tough cookie, but she was a sharp business She was sharp. But she, she, your grandfather she was like the image, money. but your, your grandmother yeah. ran the books. She did. And she showed me how to balance a yeah. checkbook. And uh, it was quite eye-opening and extremely helpful. And I actually probably for like... Five years out of my life, balanced a checkbook. And then, of yeah. course, ATMs came, and you didn't really need – you could keep in real time yeah. the eye of your checkbook. So I'm not even sure people do that anymore in terms yeah. of – I had a paper checkbook. You know, oh, okay. the, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, so what I mean, what, what were they doing nowadays yeah, to well, teach kids financial literacy? Yeah, I, don't I think even... I learned financial literacy from my grandparents who took me to Chemical Bank in Bayside wow. Queens to open up a savings account, right? There you go. And, and that was like what I knew. They don't teach it in school. Financial literacy is a huge gap right now. I mean, when we were young, they didn't teach it. But today, there's so many kids, you know, um, and, and especially in our underprivileged communities. Yes. Who, they're not teaching them yeah. financial literacy. Yeah. All, they, all that we see in society is make money and spend money, make money and spend money. And they're not teaching how to really create wealth. Yeah, right? and, and it's I, so upsetting. It, it is, and it goes back to what we were talking about in an earlier episode about your relationship with money. I mean, my goodness, if we don't learn about it, there, it, you know, it's hard to take your relationship and turn it. Because I did say at the end of that episode, 
just because you grew up with a certain relationship, if it right. was negative, you could flip it. But having that knowledge is power. See, all these episodes kind of go see, together. See, and then the, and then changing your yeah. relationship can I remember happen. learning about money by reading. Like, I'm always into personal development. Okay, you know? yeah. And you know that. Yeah. So, you know, I was reading books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and and the money money mindset. And, and I would go to different events and really educate myself about, because it's all, it's emotional. Money yeah. is emotional. We talked about that. Yes. Right? So it's a money mindset, but it's also how to teach financial literacy. And, and, and this is something that if we're not taught at an early age, then we go into adulthood and we don't know. And we, we're no better right. off. Right? right. And so I think what's also really interesting is when we were growing up and for most of our adult life, there was cash, dollar bills that you would yeah, yeah, yeah. transfer to people. Right, right. But like our kids' generation, like I don't think they have that much cash on them. It's a card. So yeah, it's so intangible, money, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't really, you, you don't know, feel it going out like you do when we were growing up. I mean, we could be wrong. I'm sure there are some some classes or school systems that teach a little bit. Yeah. But like they spend so much time teaching other stuff. But when it comes to just, you know, career and money and, and, and budgeting, budgeting and, and taxes and, and, and businesses and things like that. It's a gap. I think in a lot of high schools, if you choose it as an elective, you like, I kind of remember that, but I definitely didn't lean that way. Remember, as I said in an earlier uh, podcast, I was scared of money. I wasn't seeking knowledge, right? I was scared of it. So because it wasn't, you know, presented and you had to choose, I definitely wasn't choosing. I was choosing, you know, theater, you know, (laughs) which is great, but it wasn't money. I mean, there are some, there are some entrepreneur things in schools, you know, teaching entrepreneurship clubs and things like that, but you got to seek it out. You got to seek it. Look, you know, one of the things that's near and dear to our heart is helping people in financial education, financial literacy. It it is. So one of the things we're involved with Mm -hmm. uh, is a charity that the whole goal of this foundation is to teach kids about money. Yeah. Now it's called 10X Kids. Yeah, like and that, it, it, the, it's the, amazing. The foundation's what? Called the Cardone, uh, Grant Cardone Foundation. Yeah. From Grant Cardone, if yep. you know him. Yep. If you don't know him, look him up. Yep. But we're very involved with his foundation, 10X Kids. Yeah, I mean, we want to support what, yeah. you know, uh, things that are near and dear to our heart. Again, this is the power of money. Like, yeah, yeah. We're, we're using the, the money that we are so blessed to have been able to have. That's and right. we're trying to support causes that we believe in and that we want to contribute positively to the world yeah. and this is one of them and um you know it it's just so important we've seen it with our own kids we've seen right. it with so as recently like this isn't an old school problem this is no, no. still like an issue amongst a lot oh, of communities so, so we were um we had the pleasure of going on this uh mastermind event right? yeah and we met stormy remember meeting stormy how could I forget? Right now, this Coach Stormy. Stormy, Coach Stormy. Yeah. Right? Stormy Wellington. Yeah. Unbelievably successful person. Um, and and Stormy's partner, Mello, too. Yeah. Um, unbelievably successful. D- different, different community than where we come from, right? Yep. The black community. Yep. Um, and Mello was talking to me and he said, you know, they don't teach this in our community. Yeah. You know, these kids see all the bling and they 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 see the stuff, you know, all the fancy stuff. They get the money and spend it, but nobody's teaching them how to grow their money, yeah. how to multiply and their And that's money. like the social media culture, you know, right. like the visual and the, you know, videos and the visual of right. the money, but nobody's talking about, you know, now, how to grow it and I, make it work for you. I know it's near and dear to heart to Stormy yep. and Mello. Yep. I know it's near and dear with Grant Cardone the great, and Elena Cardone with yep. the Grant Cardone Foundation. Yeah. And, you know, look, to me, the first place to start is that book, 10X Kids. Yeah. Is a book called 10X Kids. I wish I had a copy, but we didn't really know we, we were going to We didn't know we were do doing this. this, so we don't um, have a copy. <laughs> but it's called 10X Kids. It's a whole curriculum, right? Yeah. So, you know, we're in the financial planning business, and we help people. But I think it starts with the kids, too. I think it starts in the younger generation. We Absolutely. teach them you know, how to grow their money. And I think, look, what we provide is, you know, it's kind of like, we kind of, sometimes we use this analogy, you know, you know how you, you don't know the inner workings of your car, but you know how to turn it on and you know how to get from one point to the next, right? You don't, you're not the person who built the car. You're not the person. You just want the car to work for you, get you from A to B. So I want, I want people to understand that they, they need to know how money can work, but they don't need to know everything. All the mumbo jumbo. All, you know that's I mean? where you and I come in, and other people like us. There are other people like us who help people do that. That's a great analogy because you need to know how to start the car. You do. You need. 
you need to know how to maintain the car. Cars need maintenance. They need oil changes. They need to check the filters, right? Yep. So you need to maintain the cars. You need to know how to start the cars. You need to check the cars. You need to make sure the tire pressure is well. Now, you're not going to... A big job, you're not going to fix the transmission or the engine, of right? Of course not, right. Uh, you pay someone to do the oil change, but you know every three to 5,000 miles you need an oil change, right? That's right. Same thing. You want to understand and keep track and know what's going on. You want to be involved. Yes. And you want to find the right people. To and help. be aware, yeah. Because look, it's getting more complicated right now. Oh my gosh, I mean, the whole crypto and everything. And I mean, that's a whole nother podcast that we could discuss. One but. of the things they talked about at the conference we were at was, yeah. if you really look at the United States of America from a tax point of view, uh, really kind of now uh, copying Europe in a little way. And believe it or not, tax rates are low now. Yes. But everybody agrees they're going to go higher. Yep. We could see some massive tax rates. We have some massive financial issues in our country. And if you don't educate yourself about what to do about them, then you can be caught with the government dictating to you what to do. I love what you always say. You want to you want to tackle it while it's a problem before it becomes a, pri- yeah. a crisis. Fix and the that's before... where financial literacy comes in. Yes. So I think we've covered it really well. We can yeah. go on and on, but we don't have the time. I, 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 I'll, I'll yeah. have a secret for you. Yeah. I mentioned that 10X Kids book. Yep. Like he has another book called The 10X Rule, but The 10X Kids book teaches financial literacy. I read that book. I think it was awesome. I was like, oh, I love this book. So even as an adult, I would get that book. (laughs) (laughs) You're so funny. But it is a foundation that helps financial literacy. Absolutely. With that said, um, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no. We love to hear your point of view about it. We'd love to hear your experiences. We'd love to hear everybody's, you know, own personal situation if they want to share. You can get to us through our uh, our website. You can get through us through info at strategies, the number 4wm.com. You can call us at the number if you're looking at the screen right now. We just love it. You can comment below if we're posting totally. this in social media. Any which way, I just I hope you guys reach out and hey, let pl- us know what please, you think. Please understand, we're here to help you. We are. Anything you need, let us help you. We do. We uh, are. We do a great job. And, and comment, questions, whatever help you need, let awesome. us know. But thank you for joining thank us. Thank you, everybody. It's been so fun. Episode four. Episode four. More to of come. Financial behind the scenes talk with Michael and, and Laura. Laura. Take or care, Laura and everybody. Michael. Laura and Michael. I got to keep doing that. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Take care. Have a great day.